U.S. National Security Advisor Susan Rice criticized Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's upcoming speech to the U.S. Congress. What has happened over the last several weeks, uh, by virtue of the invitation that was issued uh, by the, speaker, by the, the speaker and the acceptance of it by Prime Minister Netanyahu on two weeks in advance of his election, is that on both sides there has now been injected a degree of partisanship, mm -hmm. which is not only unfortunate, I think yeah. it's, uh, it's destructive of the fabric of the relationship. Israel's prime minister is in accord with many in Congress who oppose U.S. President Barack Obama's negotiations with Iran over its nuclear program. Netanyahu defended his departure from diplomatic protocol. As Israel's prime minister, I am responsible for the security of Israel and Israeli citizens. And I must do everything I can to express our objection and to warn of the danger if Iran obtains nuclear weapons, not only for us, but for our neighbors, also to the whole world. I respect the White House and the President of the United States, but such... I respect the White House and the President of the United States, but on such a fateful matter that can determine whether or not we survive, I must do everything to prevent such a great danger for Israel. For analysis, I spoke earlier with Matthew Duss. He is president for the Foundation for Middle East Peace. Seems like an unprecedented situation where Benjamin Netanyahu will be addressing the joint sessions of Congress, seemingly taking sides with the opposing political party of the sitting president. In your estimation, how bad is this? Well, I think this is pretty bad, and it got worse today, uh, first with Netanyahu declining an invitation from top Senate Democrats uh, for a closed-door meeting, uh, and then following up uh, shortly after that with the announcement by Virginia Senator Tim Kaine that he would not be attending the speech. But I think we need to think for a moment about Netanyahu's decision to decline that invitation to the meeting uh, with Senate Democrats. He has claimed that he's accepted the invitation from Speaker John Boehner to, to give this speech because he needs to go anywhere, uh, accept any invitation and speak to anyone he can to make clear his view that this deal with Iran is dangerous. Now, if that were true, it seems that it seems that he would certainly accept an invoca invitation from top Senate Democrats who are going to be key uh, in, in, in considering new sanctions legislation and in considering any deal that the administration comes forward with from Iran. So I think this raises real and legitimate questions about exactly what he's trying to accomplish with this speech. And that's exactly what I'm going to ask you next. What could he possibly be thinking? Many have reported that even his closest advisors yeah. have advised against him giving this speech. Um, how does this play to his advantage? Well, I think the way that he sees it, and again, I can't read his mind, but knowing what a what a kind of what a you know what a political creature Netanyahu is, like most politicians, I think there's no surprise there. But someone who is has an election uh, in just a few weeks, uh, someone who is in a very close race with uh, his competitors in the Labor Party, uh, uh, Isaac Herzog. Uh, so I think clearly uh, this part of this, at least a big part of it, in my view, is an attempt to present himself to Israeli voters as the man who can speak on Israel's behalf on the world stage, the man who confronts opposition, the man who, the, the man who disregards criticism and goes forward and speaks his mind uh, regardless of, uh, of the pushback. Now, I think he's gotten so much criticism inside Israel about this that I think it's possible that this could actually be a net negative for him with regard to the, to the election, but we'll have to wait and see. Well, Matt, you're telescoping the questions before I can even ask them, and I was <laughs> going to ask you then, uh, with your ear to the ground and your finger on the pulse, how is this playing with his base in Israel? Well, I think he has part of his base, a big part of it, um, uh, are people who, who like when the Israeli prime minister stands up to the world as they see it, even stands up to the United States, who uh, a, a very strong majority of Israelis, of course, understand um, the partnership between the U.S. and Israel, the support of the United States on a whole range of issues is extremely important for Israel. But still, there's a part of Netanyahu's base that is very nationalist, uh, that, that just sees value in Netanyahu sort of putting his finger in the eye of anyone who would try to criticize him. So I think at this point, that, that's the only, those are the only people in Israel who I think 
kind of like the idea of this speech. It seems to me that there is a growing number of Israelis who see Netanyahu doing real danger to the U.S.-Israel relationship, which, again, is the most essential and important relationship for Israel in the world. And speaking of which, let me circle back to this whole issue of the Senate Democrats inviting him to meet with them in a closed-door meeting and he uh, refusing or turning down that invitation. Uh, Senators Durbin and Feinstein said in this letter making the appeal for the invitation uh, that warning that making U.S.-Israeli relations a partisan political issue could have, quote, lasting repercussions. What might those, quote, lasting repercussions look like? Well, I think any time this, be, you know, you see Israel or any issue in foreign policy uh, becoming a partisan issue, um, you know, that creates problems for that relationship, for that policy. My own view is, listen, if we have sincere differences about issues of foreign policy, such as Israel, we should argue about them, we should debate them, hopefully we'll do so respectfully. Um, but I think for a long time, the understanding in Washington has been that U.S. support for Israel is simply bipartisan, there's no real debate, and I think Netanyahu's behavior and Boehner's behavior here um, ha has really called that into question by forcing Democrats uh, ver very just straight up to choose between the Israeli prime minister and their own president, a president who Americans re elected two times. And that Forc brings me to my next question, and that is yeah. who's being more, and I'm using this word reckless, you didn't mm -hmm. use that word, but he's mm -hmm. being more reckless in this. Is it uh, House Speaker of the House Boehner or Bibi Netanyahu? Well, I think the answer is both. I mean, if you look at the, the sort of timeline that led to this invitation, you saw Netanyahu's ambassador, uh, Israel's ambassador to the U.S., Ron Dermer, who's a very close advisor to Netanyahu. People kind of jokingly refer to, him, refer to him as Bibi's brain in the same way that people refer to Karl Rove as Bush's brain. Um, but this invitation was cooked up between the two of them in several weeks leading up to the announcement the day after the State of the Union, uh, such that Dermer even kept the invitation secret from Secretary of State John Kerry in their meeting just just days before the invitation was announced. So I think blame needs to be laid at, at, at both of their doorsteps, Boehner for keeping this secret, and, and Netanyahu and, and Dermer for simply going out. I think there's no question that this was kind of outside the bounds of, of regular diplomatic practice. Do you think this will have any substantive or real effect on the Iran nuclear uh, peace deal that's going on? Well, if anything, uh, I think that Netanyahu has solidified uh, and galvanized uh, democratic um, support for, for the president's uh, initiative. Certainly, Democrats have real and legitimate questions about the contours of this final deal. Um, but I think before this speech was announced, you had a number of Democrats who were wavering and possibly going to support a new round of sanctions the, the, that the administration had made clear that they did not want. Um, and if I look at the result here, it seems that Netanyahu, by pulling this stunt, has only convinced a number of Democrats that they need to give the president more time. Mm. All right. We'll leave it right there for now, Matt Dust. Thank you so much. Thank you.